How deep is the issue of the way we think? It's quite deep. I mean, if we asked, um, if we had the opportunity to ask Gregory Bateson, he would have said that the main problems in the world come from the difference between how nature works and the way we think. A literal quote, you know. And uh, back in the back in the seventies, because all what we are discussing has been already discussed uh, long ago, and, uh, and with very creative responses. In 1979, the Club of Rome published a report, which is much less known than the limits to growth, titled "No Limits to Learning." The title says it all, right? But the subtitle was addressing the human gap. And the human gap is that you could use this definition by Bateson or you could use the, the perspective of this is the difference between uh, our capacity to act and our capacity to understand the consequences of our actions. And I would add, and the, the, our willingness to deal with the consequences of our actions. So of course, this is very much related to cybernetics, to feedback loops, to communication theory that Rodolfo has mentioned. Where is the, um, I mean, what is the, the background uh, in my view is just that we don't have access to reality. Our conscious mind doesn't have access to reality. We have perceptions. We receive through all our body perceptions of reality that we interpret according to certain frameworks of interpretation, which are usually not explicit, not even necessarily conscious. And those frameworks limit very much how we can interpret. Look at the many interpretations uh, that COVID has brought to us or any other phenomenon. So for me, fake news are just a symptom that we have many different frameworks of interpretation, but most of them are dominated by what Thomas uh, mentioned, you know, the modernist mindsets. And in, in modernity with a capital M, interestingly and strangely enough, uh, some domains of knowledge have been able to uh, change dramatically their frameworks of interpretation, for instance, physics, and Rodolfo wrote a fantastic paper on that, on the many paradigms that physics has been able to produce over time to try to interpret what the, came out from the experiments. But overall in society, in the way we organize society, in the way we organize governments, or uh, politics or economy, uh, we are very much in this paradigm of modernity, which is built on separation as a key concept and separation and disconnection from nature, of course, from other human beings, from separation. I mean, and it's very useful for many things, but it's very dangerous when you apply that to the whole epistemology of our relationship with others, with nature and, and with time. And interestingly enough, modernity, we cannot say that modernity has not been effective. It has been terribly effective. I mean, and of course, um, it has built a, a whole world from that paradigm of, uh, of separation. How could it be, you know? Well, the point is that we have been consistently ignoring um, the, the consequences of our actions. I mean, putting them aside, the tensions and tragedies we were creating, we have been ignoring them. Now, time has come in which we cannot ignore them anymore. And because they, you know, they slash back, they come back to us. So that's where the, so for instance, COVID, what do you learn from COVID? You could say, oh, uh, our systems are fantastic. Our society is fantastic because we have been able to develop new, new vaccines, right? And that's a blind spot because the new vaccines is a new response of disconnection. What do we have to do now to be human? Separate from others, wear masks, isolate ourselves, uh, social distance and use vaccines. And we don't ask anymore the question of why did the, why did the virus came in the first place? We don't remember about the destruction of ecosystems. But trying to answer um, very briefly to the other two questions, 
I would say, I think the most important thing we need to do is to change our lens, you know? And the miracle is that we have blind spots, but we are able to realize that we have blind spots, which in my view is quite a miracle, you know? I'm not saying we can identify all our blind spots, but at least we know we have that. And, and then from there, we can go elsewhere and look at how people in typically in uh, desperate situations have been learning uh, because they had no option to learn. If you look at that, if you put the lens off uh, on, let's look at situations where these human gap has been overcome in a deliberate way to produce what Aurelio Peche, the founder of the Club of Rome called the human revolution, to respond to the human gap, he was calling for a human revolution in mindsets. What you find there is a lot of commonalities, a sense of humility, epistemological humility. We don't know how to <laughs> face the, the mess in which we are. Let's recognize that. Let's work on building processes and, and on the quality of how we work, walk together, rather than pretending we have the responses, we have the solutions. Another commonality is liberation from helplessness. Let's stop thinking we have no options other than the options that the system is, is providing, you know? For instance, and the system again is, each time there is a crisis, it provides a new level of disconnection and a new level of technological whatever. You know, well, let's, let's figure out that there are other possibilities. And let's, I like very much the uh, Rodolfo, the bending, breaking, blending. So I would bend our perception, you know, use a new lens, which is in a way bending our perception of reality. I would break the model of knowledge creation we have to put it upside down. I mean, break, don't interpret me wrongly, but I would put actually upside down. We have to start from the questions instead of starting from the institutions, which are just answering questions which are no longer, they might be valid, but are no longer relevant for our humanities challenges. So let's start from the questions and, and from the ground and from people and blending because it is about blending all threads of knowledge, all capacity, all human capacities, conscious and unconscious. Donella Meadows said, dancing with systems. Let's dance with systems. Art and art, not just as decoration, as a fundamental capacity of expression. That has already been done by pedagogic pioneers. I mean, Lev Vygotsky worked one century ago. Uh, Loris Malaguzzi uh, worked 70 years ago, and so on and so on. Kids come with 100 languages, said uh, Malaguzzi. I mean, that's where we have to come back to rehumanize. And you know what? What gives me optimism is that this human revolution is happening is happening in places which are not so visible and maybe that's part of their secret. They don't need to be so visible. We just have to look at them to find the sources of what needs to be done and then try to catalyze the emergence of this human revolution. Thank you. <laughs>